if you ask me to comment on a very very serious piece of law uh, i'm just i would just be staring back at you as a citizen you can change the situation the first thing that i would ask you to do is send in an email to moef where you state your objection to the eia 2020 draft what is an eia let's try to understand what is it eia stands for environment impact assessment any project or development be it a dam a mine a um, airport or a highway it requires to be assessed at the proposal stage to see what are the impacts it has on the environment both the benefits and the non benefits based on this assessment it is decided whether it's wise to go ahead with that particular project or development depending on this assessment there are various mitigations are planned or even if a particular project is affecting a lot to the environment this project can be rejected so the difference between earlier and the current form is that earlier eia notifications like there is a one from 2006 has been amended about 40 times it, every time it was amended it was weakened before the 90 uh, 2006 version there was a 1994 version which was amended about 30 times again that was amended to weak every time it was very rarely was it strengthened the only strengthening that took place was in 1997 to amend the 94 notification and ensure public hearings became mandatory for all projects but when it came to 2006 notification public hearings were made Uh, we are allowed to be at the discretion of the district authorities so you can see that dilutions have been very systemic to this uh, notification process i'll talk about the three things that i think are wrong about uh, the eia draft 2020 the first thing is that it allows for post facto clearance this means that after you have built a project you have created the damage you can then apply for environmental clearance it goes against the very grain of environmental impact assessment The idea is that it's a preventive regulatory tool that allows you to know how best to go about a project or whether you should do a project in the first place. By allowing this post facto clearance, you are leaving a huge margin of uh, environmental violation and allowing the damage to happen and then seeking clearance, which does not make too much sense. The second thing that's wrong with EIA 2020 is the fact that there's very little or no public consultation and participation. they're doing this largely by lessening the notice period for public hearings even with the eia 2020 draft we were given only a period of 20 days to review and send in any objections this has been increased but this is only after the uproar uh, that there was such a short period of time for the public to review and send in objections this brings me to my third uh, point of what is wrong with the eia 2020 not only has the public consultation period been reduced we have also done away with it for a lot of projects there's a long list of projects that have been exempt from eia including certain projects which the government can term strategic and do away with eia we can destroy forests we can open up coal mines in forests we can expand ports we can cut through forests with railway lines or road networks you can widen existing roads you can expand cities you can expand industries basically you can do almost anything because the existing regulatory systems which slowed down those decisions are now sort to be lifted with the 2020 version so it is that bad enough. this essentially gives a huge margin for error and a huge margin for irreversible damage especially given that now we have the post facto clearance and i wouldn't just lay the blame on narendra modi administration i would also say manmohan singh was no better when it came to ia law we have argued that this is a subordinate law which means it is not passed through the parliament it is passed by the executive wing of the ministry and it is only placed before the parliament for information so it is not a law which has been crafted by people through their elected representatives particularly the parliament because it is a national law and that's why it is a notification so it can be amended at the will of the minister and which is exactly what prakash jawdekar did against the opinion of his own officers who wanted it to be extended who wanted commenting to be really 
democratic. He just wished them all away. Another interesting thing about the violation clause, it does not include any uh, space for the public complaints. It includes the complaints from the authority, from the state level, from the appraisal team, that's the EIA team, or the Suomoto application, that means the self surrender. No, uh, nothing included about the public con- complaint. So even if you go and if you want to complain about the project, you won't be heard. Who benefits from this type of law? It's the corporate sector. India is not making its laws anymore based on homegrown democratic processes. Most of these corporate consultants are foreign consultants. They don't care too much about India. They are here to make maximize their wealth and the weaker our environmental laws, the more quickly they can grab and loot. And they can run. If India sinks, they will go to Africa. If Africa sinks, they will go to South America. I mean, they are moving their money around the planet. And they really don't care for our natural capital. They don't care for our lives. They don't care for our livelihoods. You can see how the LG polymers case has gone. Repeatedly, the ministry was told that factory is a very disastrous factory for years. But because they wanted to favor Korean companies, they pushed the factory into into expanding and then that explosion took place. Mining projects which had the validity of 30 years earlier now will have validity of 50 years. River Valley projects which had a validity of 10 years earlier now has uh, 15 years validity. So for straight 15 years they do not have to go for environment clearance again. In the last 3-4 months of the lockdown at least 10 industries have exploded because of weakening of environmental regulatory controls. Now that is how serious this matter is. People will die and we are just not going back to Bhopal. In 19, we are setting ourselves to massive cataclysmic Bhopals with this type of weakening of law. A couple of months ago I would have said that we do not have the power to make a difference but in the recent past I've seen how citizens can come together and change the situation. So I would just request each and every one of you watching this video to write your comments for this EIA 2020. It is like you still have a day. Talk about it on social media with your friends, your family. It is important that people are aware. And while you might not be able to trigger action-oriented awareness, a simple call to action is to send in your emails to the Ministry of Environment.